So you came all the way from Toronto to uh, Watford in England for just to build a bed. Why do you think it's so important? Well, the reason why it's so important to expose groups like Bilderberg is because these are the true uh, kind of powerful elite. I mean, when you have uh, politicians, military men, and media moguls, and, and heads of finance uh, meeting together in behind closed doors, that to me is worthy of an event being covered by, uh, by journalists. And basically, um, we want to find out uh, document who's attending, yep. uh, and when you when you get an idea of who's attending, you can have an idea of what sorts of topics are being discussed that particular year, and uh, so that's why it's it's very important to stay on top of these kinds of things um, to to see see what they're up to. I mean, even within Bilderberg, there's there, there's almost like an inner circle within that inner circle. I mean, we got to remember that people still get invited to attend Bilderberg meetings by those on the steering committee. And um, I think that maybe it's, it's somewhat also, I don't think everyone who attends Bilderberg is necessarily aware of some sort of nefarious agenda or, or trying to do, uh, set up a new world order, if you will. So uh, I think some of it, what goes on in there, is um, somewhat of a recruiting program to kind of test the waters of these new up and coming uh, stars of globalism, basically, and to bring them into the fold and find out which guys are willing to get on par and work with them. I think some of the, the, the big things that happen at these meetings uh, are not necessarily in the meeting with 140 people sitting around the one table. I think some of the more um, where things actually get done might be when let's say Henry Kissinger or David Rockefeller for instance pulls one of them aside and has a little private chat with them at the bar for 20 minutes. I think that's when the real things get done at Bilderberg. Um, so again, it's tough to say exactly what they're talking about, but again, that's why we want to pay attention to who's there. In Chantilly, Virginia, there were hundreds if not thousands of people who showed up and all the who's who of the independent media. And there, at that event, I was able to get up I, I could literally have my, my lens on their car windows and I was uh, documenting everyone who was going in there and I think maybe they learned their lesson from last year and they, they realized we just can't let this amount of people get that close yeah. to the delegates. So it seems like what, what's going on here this time around is that they've learned from last year and they've kind of penned us into this serious, kind of letting us have our little area. So do you think this can carry on? The us and them, like they are over there and we can't get anywhere closer to it, or do you, what do you foresee, I guess is what I'm getting at, for the future of the conference? Well, when it comes to a group like Bilderberg, it's all about the numbers, and we always have to remember that these guys, their whole, their whole organization is set up in a pyramidal structure, with them situated at the top and all of us people making up the whole base of this thing. So, I think when we get enough numbers, enough people, that's when we might actually start to see some real change happening. Um, you know, this thing, as I said, represented in the pyramidal structure, if, let's say, a million people represent the bottom brick of that pyramid and they just step away from this thing, we may be able to see the beginning of a, of a crash and, and Bilderberg may no longer be able to continue. So I think it all comes down to the numbers and that's why it's important to continue to, to document this, do the work that you guys are doing, continue to attend these types of events so we can continue to spread the word. Awareness is still key about this point. People need to know that this is going on, and once we have the numbers, we may see a change.